You know, when we created Emporium to create awareness and sales opportunities for Philippine made products, services, and investments in the U.S. market, three, three words came to mind and they just happen to all start with the letter E just for the sake of you know, making sure you remember what they are. They're, they're empower, elevate, and educate. Okay. So with that being said, um, we also try to think we can be entertaining also. So with that being said, let me go ahead and, and move on with, with my analogy or my acronyms. Okay. So in this episode of the Emporium Masterclass, we're going to try to educate you on an amazing or a unique business opportunity. Now, this business opportunity, this business opportunity is not just about making money, even though technically that is a pretty, pretty important factor of it. Okay. It's important. The end goal is to create another exciting way to distribute and mainstream Philippine made products in the U S market. And also we're always trying to figure out, we're obsessing about how to do this and develop this way, this in a unique way of, you know, having these ways be cost efficient, sustainable. And again, let's not forget potentially profitable. We'd like to educate you on the potential of vending machines. Vending machines packed full of Philippine made products. Imagine that people throughout the United States, vending machines where people can easily get access to it's cost efficient. And a lot of people can, can technically own these things. Okay. So in this episode, we just want you to, we just want to give you sort of generalized comments, perspectives on all the things that we're doing to create this method in which to go ahead and, and create this opportunity for Philippine made products. Okay. And also now let me go ahead and, and uh, let me bring on the person that's going to help me discuss it. We're just going to have a conversation about all the different ways that a vending machine can potentially be an amazing business opportunity for anyone out there interested in creating a side hustle, become an entrepreneur, or just love supporting Philippine made products. Okay. So let me introduce the, the person that's going to have, I'm going to have this discussion with, who's going to educate us on the whole thing about vending machine for Philippine made products. Now, let me go ahead and give you his, his background. He is the, he is a digital marketing pioneer, an AI empowered marketer, a CMO, a chat prompt engineer, blockchain, smart contract, NFT, web three enthusiasts. All of that sounds amazing, right? But you know what? I'm, I'm impressed by that, but not, I'm not as, as impressed as I am with, with the other side of this, this individual. He's all of that. I have to admit, you know, all you have to do is go to his LinkedIn profile, Facebook. He does all of these amazing things, but what I'm excited about it and what made me want to try to collaborate with this gentleman is that he has this true spirit of collaboration. Okay. He, he loves his Filipino heritage. And also I think he's a lifelong marketing student, but most of all, what I like about him is that he has a way or style of creating awareness for all things Filipino not only just in the US, I, I basically globally. So please try to, well, I know you can't give me a big round of applause, but please welcome. Uh, I like to think he's amazing because he's all over the place in terms of all the things that he creates. Please welcome Rayson Esquejo of Rayson Media. Rayson. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. There you go. I had to unmute you, my friend. <laughs> hey, how's it going? How's it going? Thank you for having me today. You know, let's let's tell let's tell the story, obviously, because I like telling the stories of why you're in the car. You're usually at home. <laughs> so before you get into who you are, we had a little bit of a miscommunication. I like being I, I like being true to the audience because at the end of the day, he is a busy guy. He he does so much, but he's in his car because we sort of had him. So right now he's somewhere in downtown LA and I told him, you know, just kind of pick a nice spot in downtown LA. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we had a miscommunication. I, I, as a person who likes uh, physical interaction, in a sense, I'm kind of old school in that way, um, <laughs> was trying to go meet up with you. <laughs> Unfortunately, know, like, right? He was actually like to tell people. Going. Yeah, I was go trying ahead. to go to the Emporium. <laughs> yeah, I but, know, right? Um, I would have loved to have been be there, but but at the end, we we did make that happen. So we'll make that happen next time. So please let the audience know. <clears throat> I kind of already prepped you as far as the amazingness of the things that you do, my friend. So go ahead and tell, <laughs> tell them a little bit about Rayson Esquejo, the man, and then Rayson Esquejo, the creator 
of recent media <laughs> and all that what's is amazing about what you do. That is a uh, thank you for such a such a grandiose intro. <laughs> <laughs> so my no. name is Jason. I am a uh, I am a kid from the San Fernando Valley here in Los An the the valley next to Los Angeles. Um, I am a digital kind of like resident in the sense. Uh, I am a a guy that when social media started getting around um, and started becoming more popular, became a social media marketer, uh, even though that was kind of like not a thing that people were doing. Uh, I've been doing it now for the past 18 years. I used to run the social media department for a movie studio called Open Road Films, uh, jumped off of that and started working, you know, like trying to get back to the community in the sense for the Filipino community here in Los Angeles uh, by creating uh, different kind of experiential people that indulge in the Filipino culture. Um, in 2017 and 2018, we, me and uh, one of my friends threw a food festival for Filipino food called Eat, Play, Move in Eagle Rock. And it had a uh, it had a really good turnout, and th which was a really good signal for me to kind of um, dive back into this and, and kind of open it up to everyone in, in, in Los Angeles to, to kind of dive into the Filipino community. Um, from there, uh, we were going to throw another one and then pandemic happened. We pivoted, we created this thing in downtown Los Angeles that happens more frequently called the field market. If you haven't been down to the field market, we have another one coming up in June as well as in April. Um, so come out and check out uh, what we're doing. We're trying to revitalize the, uh, Filipino small businesses and expose them to the larger communities here in Los Angeles and the world, maybe. Oh, you are muted. Yeah, my wife likes that button. I think she's the one who mutes me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Raisin, you know, you're understating the, the importance or the impact of that, those events that you did. You know, you created like Manila District. You know, you, you co-founded that. Uh, and hopefully that becomes sort of a, a staple. And I think it should be. Uh, because you're introducing, and that's what I like about you. Like I said, you have a different style, you know, whoever you associate with, you have a different style of promoting the culture in a different perspective. You know, doing this for a while, I've seen different styles. I'm not going to mention what, but, you know, the reality is, is that I like your style. You're able to have a lot of people relate and connect to the Filipino market uh, or the Filipino community uh, in, the, in the mainstream. And I think that's the best uh, for whatever we're doing in terms of not only introducing the culture, but the product. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to uh, this idea that you had. Um, I, I want to know yes. exactly how did you come up with the idea, not not because it's a new idea of vending machine, but the idea of packing the Philippine products into a vending machine here in the U.S. market. So why don't we start with that? Well, it's 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 it's... Like again, it's not a new idea. Yet. Well, it looked like we I lost race. There you go. Okay, okay. we lost you. Okay. okay, take take three. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so then, um, so um, it's not a new idea. It's I, I've always been a fan of of kind of taking things that are old and bringing them new uh, or taking a twist to it. Um, and the vending machines are kind of in that same vein. Um, having a vending machine kind of accesses uh, several different things. So the, the thought process behind it is this, is that how do we deliver Philippine products to a larger market uh, more efficiently? And uh, one of those thought processes was throwing a food festival. Uh, in our in our first initial food festival, we had over twenty five thousand people, and they're they're just loving this stuff. Um, the second thought was, you know, we we throw it more frequently in frequency, and which was the field market where lots of people had the opportunity to go uh, more often um, to to experience the, this kind of like Filipino culture kind of through food. Um, vending machines was kind of the next kind of evolution of that. How do you get them in multiple places and and kind of um, 
thirst the quench for Filipino kind of products without having to spread too thin and, and you know, like open a bunch of stores or groceries and such like that, or uh, like mini markets, uh, vending machines are, are kind of that. So um, yeah, that was the, that was basically the thought process behind that. You, you, you know, when I first heard about that, when I first reached out there, I remember, you know, we were having coffee at Starbucks and, and we didn't really discuss it until one day you, you sent me a flyer that I go, it blew my mind because I was sort of like, maybe I was putting it out in the universe and here you were already created this thing. Because when, <laughs> when, when you think about it, I, I'm a big fan of that, right? I, I threw it out there and I'm thinking somebody's going to come up with this. Somebody has to come up with it. And it's not that you just came up with the idea, but you actually did a lot of the legwork already. You did all the things you need to do. You have the proper context. And I like the thought process because at the end of the day, it's very, you know, the whole idea of a vending machine, it's affordable, it's unique, and we'll get more into that. But I just wanted to reiterate what you just said, because your whole thought process is how do you do it efficiently? How do you do it cost effectively? And again, we'll get into that a little bit later, but I, I see that. And it, it, the 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 potential for it is is staggering. Uh, vending machine in general, you know, in in general, it's not a new idea. But I think mm -hmm. vending machine as a machine has progressed in different ways to interact with the with a purchaser. But also, it's what you put in there because I've been hearing a lot of different things being used by a vending machine. I've heard of art being put in vending machine. I've heard of I've heard of uh, women's products being put in vending machines, and they're all. I've heard uh, yeah. plants and seeds that you can you can um, you can plant with, so you buy things from here and use it to plant, like a, as a green initiative. It's kind mm -hmm. of like thematic vending machines um, have have lots of use to them, but I I have yet to see a kind of like unified marketing front to cohesively put together a bunch of vending machines with a cultural like thematic um theme to it yeah i think that's the beauty of it just like all of the things that you've done you've always put the culture in there and always have an eye on that component i, I like it you know with, with everything that you've done so this one is no different because it's yeah it's one thing to have the, the vending machine but you're uplifting and giving more opportunity for philippine made products right and it's uh, you know like it, especially here in los angeles it's it's helped uh really like um refine that perspective on things you know like i i, I mean american born filipino but i go to the philippines like you know once a year to visit family um so i kind of have that duality of like that perspective but you know growing up with not primarily like all filipinos around me i have a lot of friends who are not filipino who i love to introduce the culture to and this is kind mm -hmm. of like the same kind of extension of the arm to everyone else um, you know, like there are more Filipinos in Los Angeles than there are in any other area outside of the Philippines. Uh, so the concentration here is the largest. So it's kind of like the exposure of this kind of stuff is around since there's so many Filipinos around here. And, you know, like it's never been like put up front to be like, hey, look at this, try this. Um, I know a lot of like people that I know try to introduce it to, to everyone as well as like you know like what what food festivals and what um are integrated like ube shakes and stuff like that in burger places um but this is this is a natural step to try to get people into like you know how they eat asian snacks in general mm -hmm. and that's probably going to lead me to the next section of our discussion but to sort of cap off this part of it you know how did the vending machine idea came you know came about uh, again, it's the style. It's the way you're entering people's consciousness. You know, at the end of the day, vending machine, that's common, meaning like people know what that is. They're familiar with it. It's not like they're going to go to it. What's that? What do you do with that thing? You know, it, it's not like that. So right away, they're going to go and they're going to be curious. And again, you're slowly incorporating that into the psyche or the awareness of the people and the potential of it having to be in different places without putting up a huge, humongous building or whatever. Uh, it is going to be sort of fun, at least in my eyes, trying to to build that that consciousness through with these interesting machines. And I know you have a lot of interesting machines, new and used, uh, <laughs> to do that. You know, different versions. So, with yeah, that being it's said, a, it's yeah. an idea of um, advertising. Advertising is is uh, repetition, right? Like the the goal is to get people to remember something. 
in advertising. So that's why frequency is so important because you forget some like 80 something percent of what you see throughout the day. But if you had a variety and a, a vast amount of these kind of culturally Filipino themed vending machines, people start to normalize it, especially when it coincides with something that they're already familiar with. Um, it's yeah. funny, like when we did, we, when we did eat, play, move, people were like, oh, what's that? An ube donut? Well, I know what donuts <laughs> are. I like donuts. So maybe I'll try this. So it's like that. It's it's like the, the toe dip in for a lot of people. Like, you know, oh, like, yeah, that's a Filipino vending machine. That's the goal is that people are like, yeah, that's a Filipino food vending machine. You guys don't have that? Boom. Yeah, I'm telling you, boom. That's how I look at it. Like, boom, like right in your face. You, you don't need to be surprised what the heck it is. You already know what it is. You're just going to be curious at the end of the day. So uh, I said I was going to cap off the section, but before we do that, I want to show the flyer so that we can refer to it back and forth. But let me go ahead and show the flyer, the one pager that the people might be interested in receiving. And if you are watching this and you want to receive it, go ahead and message Emporium and I'll send you uh, you know, this, this flyer that, that Grayson created. Okay, so let me go ahead and share that. So there you go, Rayson. You want to go ahead and maybe explain what's on here? Yeah, it's it's kind of just like a one pager overview of like what kind of like this like I'm calling it a fulfilled uh, outpost because it's kind of like uh, we have the filled market, which is a um, it's a kind of a a play on words where it's it's Filipino led. This is kind of like a full of Filipino led <laughs> products. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it, it's kind of like a tie-in both for the Filipino community to have something around it, like for them, as well as a a outpost for people to to try products that you know they never ever heard of before. Like, um, it's funny. I had a friend that came in from Tennessee, and he's like, "I want to go to one of these Filipino groceries because I want to bring some snacks home for." Uh, my family, and he bought ube pancake mix. He bought um, like <laughs> boy bawang. He's like, what are these? These are like garlic nuts or something. I was like, kind of. You should yeah. try them. And he tried it. And he's like, this is amazing. Where do I get more of this? And I was like, come back to California. But like, see that that's that's often the question is like, where do I get this? Um, I want to normalize that. That's the the whole goal there. Build a community around these kind of things that we can also use to unify not only the Filipino American community, but introduce it to other people into the fold. Yeah, because if you look at it, like you said in the, the flyer, it's 4.2 million Filipinos identifying into the United States, right? But here's my point. I think overall, I see all the Filipinos, even a small percentage of that could be brand ambassadors of Philippine products. That's how they can introduce it. Now all they have to do is, can you imagine if all these vending machines are all over the place? Hey, you want to try some Filipino snacks? It's just right there. It's just right over there. It's just right over there. And then they can try a variety of it. And, and again, I'm, I'm hoping that the unifi you know, unifying sec part of what you said, the component is like that, where we, we can be proud of the culture. You can be proud of these things. Not only are you promoting Philippine made products, but you're creating livelihood and you're sort of like using that as a, a, a bite size um, um, information or something that people consume that really can sort of uh, be leveraged eventually or step by step in getting to know the culture, which I love them. You know, I love it because obviously you, we have to admit this. Uh, you can't deny that there are certain snacks that we go, wow, only in Philippines can you have that. <laughs> right right yeah 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 and that's the part that i that i like the most so here again if you're interested in this flyer i talked a little bit about revenue generation and we'll talk a little bit about that later in my question to to Rayson. but for now let's go back to uh the next question at hand uh that i wanted to ask Rayson. give us some you know let, let's talk about you know, we talked about the products, but what about the potential in general? Because I actually did some research on it and maybe you had some and maybe you have some numbers and I can just supplement it. But as far as international snacks, other than the fact that, like I just said, people can be, um, Filipinos can be brand ambassadors for these products, but in general, uh, have you done any sort of research even, you know, on the surface about international snacks and, and brands? I mean, uh, international snacks and beverages. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, there, there is a growing demand for these kind of things. Um, the whole, in the past couple of years, that whole Filipino food movement 
has really raised awareness for um, these kind of products. Um, you can tell because larger companies are starting to penetrate the market. You have um, like duck egg flavored chips that are starting to pop up in, in supermarkets. And these are things that you wouldn't normally, it, it are not a normally um, common palate type flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and they're starting to penetrate the market. And, and obviously because the data is there, um, I'm just piggybacking off of the data that other people are using to 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 gauge the market um it's funny it's kind of like a it, it's the burger king tactic have you ever heard of the burger king tactic no it's, please i'm hungry too it's lunchtime so go ahead and tell me about the burger king tactic. <laughs> it's uh burger kings pop up wherever there are mcdonald's um and burger king does that specifically uh, supposedly specifically because it's mcdonald's does all the research of where they would be successful and uh burger king just follows that to, to wow. instead of looking for the trends like that they, they follow whatever the trend that mcdonald's has paid lots of money to find out um and the, the <laughs> fact that the visibility of like international snacks in in groceries across the united states or especially here in, in, in los angeles uh lets me know that there are people wanting this stuff outside of of the Filipino community or the growing population of the Asian Americans wanting to try this. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. A lot of the potential, I actually tried to use a couple of, uh, you know, Google some of the information uh, regarding international snacks. So if you humor me and for the audience to just like listen to stats, I, I'm just trying to reiterate what, what Rayson said. So let me go ahead and read what I read. In, uh, uh, in the internet. According to a report by Grant New Research, the U.S. market for international stack, snacks and beverage was valued at $44.3 in 2020 and is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 5.5% from 2021 to 2028. And the demand for international snacks and beverages in the U.S. market is driven by several factors, increasing consumer interest in diverse and exotic food products, just like what, what Rayson said, uh, rising health concerns leading to demand for healthier snack options, and then the growth of e-commerce platforms for facilitating the easy avail availability of international snacks and beverages. And now we can add the vending machine to it, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. As well as like you know, like the the median income for, in Los Angeles alone for Filipino Americans is about eighty thousand um, dollars. Across the United States, the median income for Filipino Americans. Per 2019 was was ninety two thousand dollars I think it was, that's that's higher than the average general income in the United States for sixty eight thousand. So there's buying power behind, like, wanting these kind of products. It's probably why they're penetrating the market because they're trying to capitalize on like people with money. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Obviously, uh, I think during the pandemic, there was a lot of, there was a surge of people wanting to try different things, right? Because yeah. they're at home, they're trying all these different snacks. And like I said, there are some silver linings to the, to the pandemic. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to ignore all the other stuff that wasn't so great. But uh, at the end, those are the things that expose different things to the consumer. And I hope that it does continue. Uh, and people will will look into it. So, but now I'm thinking uh, we're doing a little bit of a prognosticating here, here, Mason. But let me go ahead and let, let, let's pretend we are prognosticators. But at the, end, at the end, I keep thinking to myself: now that people are always out, you know, so that is probably the best thing for a vending machine to be out there. Uh, not only is easy accessible. I mean, I know you could order a lot of these things online and stuff like that, yeah. products, right? But nothing beats where. If you can even make a campaign where, you know, like find Waldo, like an old thing, you know, where, you know like where, where are the nearest vending machine for Philippine made products, you know, then you can even make a campaign of, of where they are so people can visit it. And because especially if you put them in the, the right spots, right? Yeah, people want, I mean, like, I, I, I definitely, there's signals that people are kind of uh, burnt out from you know, doing the, the online ordering uh, for food. The, people are out looking for experiences, right? Um, it doesn't have to be like bungee jumping, but they want micro experiences, which I think yeah. vending machines, um, again, with a unified marketing campaign to kind of like tie them all together, it's kind of an experience in itself. And yeah. I think 
a lot of people are craving that, especially been uh, from being locked down for a couple of years. And this is not something that's like crazy. It's not a giant food festival where it might be a little bit overwhelming. This is kind of like a micro experience that, you know, you, you can kind of dive into. Yeah, that, like you said, every time you say something about experience, I keep thinking the vending machine. I'm sure there are a lot of vending machines, and I think you've already mentioned some of them to me where you can even interact with the user of it, and you can do videos and things of that nature. So in a way, it, it, the vending machine itself could even actually be entertaining, but at the same time, like I said, it's like you're taking, you're, 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 you're taking um, you know, if, if eventually you see all these vending machines all over the place that are Filipino, products then or any other product really then you're you're taking them along to your uh, whatever experience you have it's you're you're right there you're bringing it along yes you can go to a store but like i said it's a different experience when you all of a sudden boom it's just right there um you know you don't have to wait in line to buy it you know it's easy as long as the machine is easily you can easily buy it it's 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 structured that way i, I think that's the best way to create uh, the products and in this case philippine product awareness for for all that matter in terms of trying to bring that into strategic places. So any, yeah, any also other... frequency and, and like kind of like um, of where vending machines can be placed. So like if I wanted to grab something like a, a Asian American or Filipino American snack or Filipino snack, I'd have to go to a, a Island Pacific or a Seafood City or a uh, 99 Ranch or an Asian type grocery, right? Um, if I wanted the full variety of that, I mean, I could grab some little things from bonds or something but if i wanted a full variety i'd have to go to find a grocery um ideally this kind of idea would place these kind of snacks in more frequency in areas that might not have accessibility to those kind of groceries yeah well to be honest with you the versatility of uh, a vending machine is is amazing to me like for example we talked about this too Again, I'm trying to get the audience or who are watching this video for future consumption of it. Think about the fact that you can actually put the vending machines even in a grocery store and use it some sort of a, an incubation of products. Because from from my experience, there's a lot of you know using Island Pacific and and Seafood City. If you're watching this, okay, you know if you don't want to commit to a Filipino product and you see how it, well it could possibly do and if you buy a big amount you can just put these one of these suckers in your lobby or wherever in the entrance and see what they what the people will think and if they buy it and and to me that's another method in which how to market certain products from the philippines that eventually you might just want to test out i, I don't know what do you think Grayson? yeah there's there's different avenues for vending machines because they're, they're essentially uh like if you look at the flyer they're outposts um, that, you know, traditionally you would set a vending machine and you fill the products and like whoever takes it, takes it and you get the money afterwards. But the concept here is, is diving a little bit more into the data of it, as well as unifying it again into a, a campaign. So there's, there's opportunities for product, uh, research, um, from these vending machines. There's, there's marketing opportunities. Uh, because they're essentially kind of like billboards um, with products that that are available for um, tasting, which is for a lot of for a lot of product brands, sampling is 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 the core of their brand, right? Um, yes. How many times have you gotten free Red Bull from a, a place? And you know that's that's built into the the market research of Red Bull. Um, so that, uh, you can wrap these machines to to create like a a visibility campaign there's there's tons that can be done as long as as you know there is an abundance of them <laughs> no there, there is and and wh while you're talking about my, my brain is all over the place okay so one of the things that i also want to bring out is that having this journey with emporium and and finding suppliers for products now i'm able to even consult with the philippine manufacturers about how to possibly um package their product depending on where they want to go uh because yeah. from a philippine manufacturer standpoint they're always concerned about the cost imagine right. obviously these vending machines in recent they, they can you know they can only take certain sizes of a package right so if you're trying right. to ship products from the philippines it's great that you can have many versions of these packages put them in here and and you're really saving the the philippine manufacturers 
the, the money to ship it and you're able to bring more and have people experience it more and put it in right. these vending machines. Right. Um, there, again, like there is a, a opportunity as a, a product manufacturer. There's an opportunity as someone who doesn't necessarily have products, but wants to access that market. There is an opportunity for, if in that sense, for visibility, there's an opportunity for people who want to open these, like collaborate and, and purchase one of these vending machines to have a micro business that is low kind of um, low involvement in the sense like, yeah, so there, there's well, yeah. What we, what we could do is we could go more into that. I'll close off this segment of it about international demand for international snacks. What we wanted to just establish there is the fact that the fact that our intentions with these products uh, is to create opportunities for Philippine made products. And most of them are obviously going to be snacks. So there is definitely a demand. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about it, there's not a question of whether snacks will be bought or, or considered because they will be. It's just a matter of just like in anything else, you have to sort of maybe pick and choose what you think might be and you can experiment. Again, experimenting in a sense that it doesn't cost a lot of money even if you make a mistake, so to speak, about maybe right. you thought this product might sell, right? Right. Like it's, it's uh, again, the toe tip in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, let's go on to the next question. Um, you, we might have answered it, but I just wanted to uh, continue with it. The next question that I wanted to to ask you is that um, for this type of business, if I'm thinking about, um, you know, I, I want to have my own business. I want to have a side hustle. I, I want to promote social, you know, Philippine made products. You might have already touched on it, but let's elaborate more. What do you think is the potential of this for anyone who wants to do that side hustle, wants to maybe do a full on business? Uh, maybe we can get into the aspect of um, how can you make it successful? What's the ins and outs of it? Maybe that's the part where we need to dive into a little bit about, you know, in the regards to this question. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I mean, the, I've started businesses since I was like 16. And I know there's a lot to get into. Um, and even like business owners now, I work with a lot of them in on the race on media marketing side. Um, and there's a lot, you know, when you start a business, you have to think about um, like product or inventory. You have to think of, of real estate. You have to think of marketing. You have to think of like sustainability. Um, and this is kind of like a, a micro business in itself. Like, if you can supply a location, um, having one of these machines is basically it runs itself. Like the marketing would be supported by a community of of people who own these, as well as like you know the the online presence that we're building for this, uh, as well as as the products would be that are accessible. You wouldn't have to source the products because um, it, for people who have these vending machines, as an opportunity for them, it. You have access to a catalog of these products that that you can pick and choose to to, to have in whichever vending machine that uh, you have, um, as well as you know, like having a a support background for for getting these machines to a place. The logistics for getting the machine and sourcing it and putting it in a place are all already done. Um, I've established relationships with a a couple of businesses that would help get these machines wrapped get them um already like prepped with with um like the ability to accept venmo or credit cards or cash and coin whichever you'd like to that and having it delivered to wherever you need it delivered so basically it's a a one-stop shop you get it you 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 buy into it you get you have a location for it it gets delivered and set up and marketed for you um obviously additional marketing for that would would benefit you or whatever products you want to feature you can you can feature specific products in there but this is kind of like the easiest side hustle to get into that's kind of low maintenance yeah yeah i, I agree a lot of the things that i you know researching in all our conversation past conversation led me to to this conclusion that um you you may find it to be where you can make it a full-time gig 
okay? Or you can do it as a side hustle without having to leave your day job, as they say, uh, because yeah. like the way the way he just described it. And third, you know, you, you, your the aspect of uh, supporting Philippine products probably has to be somewhat strong, because like I said, that's the twist to the vending machine that we're trying to or the opportunity that we're trying to promote on, on the show. Because at the end of the day, yes, you you have to have a little bit of that uh, in you in terms of promoting and helping support. Uh, maybe create opportunities, I should say, for livelihood in the Philippines also. Because, um, you know, to be more specific, I sort of did a little bit more, obviously. I, I want to just deliver some of these points that I read. Obviously, when it comes to if a vending machine is profitable, it could be. I mean, I don't want to throw out numbers, but at, at the end, you, you're going to have to because on a, on a regular basis, you know, we're talking about a small scale for one machine, okay? So you have to think of it as a lot of machines to make X amount of dollars. But I think what the what's the average, I think, uh, from what I understood was that, um, you know, the per week it could generate anywhere from 100 to 200 dollars, uh, depending on your location. Again, all of that is, is uh, in, you know, de depending on where you're located and what's your stock in there. So a lot of these factors are there. So that's why I wanted to ask you as far as what do you think about about numbers and anything that you could possibly throw out to the people without them going, well, what you told me is going to give me this much, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, the in any type of business, you have to have like a business caution that, right? Like, um, we throw field markets every quarterly. Um, and, you know, we get we get um, vendors asking like, oh, how much am I expected to make at these things? As a business person, you have to understand that there are losses, there are wins, there are potential like bumps there but i mean like what you can rely on and what, what hard metrics you can uh kind of lean back on is the marketing support there um which you know like is a grade marketing support so so like for an opportunity like this uh you get me personally backing the marketing uh which you know like i i have um i understand the market from a marketing perspective, as I've done, you know, dozens of these projects, both with personal projects as well as I've done projects with like ABS-CBN and um, other other kind of like niche Filipino American um, brands. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you you will get like the the, the the number will vary depending on the location. Uh, but the marketing support will help drive to those locations, which is also an opportunity yeah. for whatever what this location is. Like if you have a, if you have a small store, uh, for example, and um, you're trying to get more traffic to that store, this can also help bolster that. Yeah. In, at, at the end, the thing that I just wanted to mention to the audience is that the things that you've already done, People who may be watching are thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll start it, whatever. You don't technically have to because when it came to what he, what, what Grayson came up with the idea of the vending machine, he's already um, sort of have his playbook, so to speak, regarding uh, the, the, the best way he could he could present this to to potential investors, buyers, or, or supporters is that, you know, he's already taken care of how to, how to figure out the location, where, product selections, right, pricing. Mm -hmm. Those are the things, and then the operating costs. He's got those numbers, and then the technology. At the end, those are the factors that need to be addressed, and that's what Rayson already uh, has put together. So that if anyone out there is interested in, in being a part of this community, then that is something you definitely need to you know to message me as well as Rayson and how to put all that together. Because Emporium is collaborating with Rayson Media because of this idea that this could be an amazing way to, to, to sort of marry what I've been doing with Emporium uh, along with what RaceSense platform is all about. So again, uh, do you agree that a lot of that, you know, those are the things that you put together already, RaceSense? Yeah, I, everything, I, I feel like everything moving forward is is kind of trying to integrate Filipino-American things and Filipino culture in in whatever I do moving forward. And this was a natural partnership, kind of like, when you reached out and you're like, oh, I'm kind of doing this. I was like, oh, it's kind of like a mini em emporium. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I like to joke around about it, but it is you. That's why when you first said it to me, my friend, I, I got overly excited because that is what it is. Because emporium really is that. It's people sample products, but more instead of people going to the emporium, 
now they can literally go outside and do that. So that's what I'm excited. So before we go to the next question, I just want to say hello to Ralph. Ralph made a comment. You know, he's interested in, um, uh, you know, if it's rolled out already and he wants to check it out. So let me ask that and then you can chime in after that, uh, Rayson. We're working on a couple of um, uh, real estate areas that machines. would accommodate that would accommodate the uh, machines. Uh, that's like I said to you. We already have the numbers, the particulars, but it's always the the, the companies buying into it. And believe me, the, the terms of it is very very simple. So we're just looking for ideal places for it. And Ralph, if you already have some people that you're thinking about, that's why I asked you to go ahead and collaborate with us. So. With that being said, I'll turn it over to Rayson and maybe he can answer me, you know, add on to what I just said to you. Yeah, so uh, like, we have one in private location and like that's kind of like just to, to see like the, it going. But like like Fernand said, we're working on public locations um, to kind of see, beta test this out. So it's, it's there's an opportunity here for like, oh, I want to open a vending machine or I just want to draw more business and be a part of this. I have a spot in my in my shop that I want to uh, host one of these machines, and then we'll take care of everything on the back end. Yes, yeah, a matter of fact, I added on to that that we have already spoken, and I think I can say this freely. We've already spoken to uh, the economic development side of the Philippine consulate to see if they can help put some of the products in 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 places that they may feel like, because it's just like what Rayson said earlier it's 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 a unifying of sorts so their their perspective on it is how do we how do we promote the culture with this vending machine too it's not just about the money again i always say well it's it, it, you know money's great right but at the same time it's not just about that because there, there's that component that needs to be addressed so that's why we reached out to the consulate general in los angeles and, and spoke to a consul and then he's probably going to try to support it and figure out a way to to bring attention to Philippine products through this this platform. So yeah, it's just a matter of not picking which one, but we welcome anyone out there right now. So if you have any particular place that you are thinking maybe we should put a vending machine of Philippine products, then please let us know. Again, messages for that. So do um, you have any word, I mean, any comment on that recent? Yeah, I mean, like if there is a location, there's definitely also an opportunity there for even more of a passive income as a, as a rev share split um there's it's kind of this opportunity and this idea is kind of like a a open book in the sense so like if i don't want to run this vending machine but i have my store and i have like a little space there that need and i need a plug uh, or i have a plug you can just plug it in we'll set it up and everything and then contract out a rev share split that's that is money for not doing anything <laughs> Yeah, th that's what I like. I, it's a lazy man's thing. Because here's the thing. Some people are thinking there, well, do I have to run it? I mean, technically, it's the least amount do of work. Do you have to refill it? Do you have to, like, yeah. Like, I, I feel like yeah, right? if you really are into that entrepreneurial like, spirit and you really want to get your hands dirty, there's an opportunity there for this. You want to, you have a couple apartments. I have a, like, shop or something. I want to put these in, in those places. I, I know yeah. someone who owns a laundry machine or a laundromat that would probably be really cool to have this but there is an opportunity there if it's like i don't really want to refill stock things i just kind of want to support it by having it in my shop uh and i want to make some money off of it there is an opportunity there for that yeah you see so either way whether you be the landlord so to speak of the machine or you're just wanting to have the machine the thing that I, you know, the next question is, what are some of the steps in starting a vending machine with business with a Philippine product twist? To, to me, like I said, Rayson already has done that. So if you want to go ahead and 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 discuss that, and maybe you even just have a suggestion. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want a business or anything, but you just believe in what we're trying to do here. Maybe you can go ahead and reach out to one of us and let us know where we can put the machine. But at the end of the day, if you feel like this is something that you want to explore, um, like I've always said. Emporium, and I, I think, you know, race is the same. Uh, collaboration is the key to a lot of these things. It's not just, you know, for your own, you know, self-interest, but also, again, how, how do we create more awareness, generally speaking, for Philippine-made products? And this is the this is it. This is this is the type of platform that we could go into. So, Rayson, what do you think about that? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, like the, this is the I, like I agree with you. This is the platform for that. If if we want to get in the masses, again, like it's all about repetition. It's all about frequency. Um, if you don't want to get like into the the minutia of all that, this is this is a perfect opportunity. Um, yeah. I- yeah, if you want to address the questions, because there, there, are, there are a number of different steps to, to starting something like this. Um, but if you're, if you, again, like other people have businesses that they have to run, they have to do their own kind of thing, this, and you want to support this, there is a opportunity there. What, what I like about what we're doing here is that you bring in the technical, the background side, the marketing side, of the vending machine, right? And I like to think what Emporium brings to the table is a little bit of that, not as much as you, of course, not as much as race and media, but the sourcing, the set, you know, of products, whether you get them directly from the Philippines or you get them to a distributor. So that aspect of it, because that's really what makes this interesting, whether you thought about vending machine as a whole or just, you know, like a twist, um, it's compelling. I asked my son just this morning, you know, he's, he's 20, three i lost track right <laughs> 23 and i told him what do you think and he says yeah it actually is an interesting idea because he's never seen one he's never seen one right. like that and that's why if you're interested in getting the details of it the step-by-step racing already has done that already so if you're interested in get, getting more and maybe finding getting the deck for the, the the idea please you know reach out to emporium as well as racing and we'd be more than happy to send that out to you um, so again, the data uh, about how to put together the business, imagine how you can, you know, and then help create awareness. We, he has all of that. So if oh, okay, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else, Matt. All right. Now the last part of it, um, going back to the, the cultural side, I said, I want to bring across a couple of points, right? Because this is. We have another 13 minutes and I'm not going to do Filipino time. So we're going to cut off at, you know, exactly at one. I'm excited because from my perspective, this is a great way to collaborate with racing because, um, again, that's why we're doing this show and we're probably going to do more to get more into details of, of the money aspect of it, the cultural aspect of, you know, these things about the vending machine, right. And doing future master classes like what we're doing now. Now, the vending machine, not a true, you know, sort of summarized. It's not an original concept, but what makes it unique is the way we supply the product. So that's where if you've ever wanted to supply it with interesting products from the Philippines, something that you can't find here, but that's not exactly Seafood City, this is a time to want to do that. You just need a machine, right? And then mm-hmm. if you are interested in creating, um, you know, like fr- figuring out how to bring products. That's what it, where Emporium comes in also. We will teach you how to source, ship, and sell. Selling is Grayson's part. So I'm going to let him speak a little bit about that. Again, just maybe reiterate what he's already probably said. But Grayson, that, that's probably why I want to just explain to everybody why uh, Emporium and Grayson Media are working together to, to do this. Yeah, so there, there is a... Uh... We, we have data, like based off of all the things that like we've done in the past we've got a, a whole lot of data on this market um the the application of, of the data is is limitless but the the physical application of it to, for people to engage with the product is is what important is 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 important is like kind of supplying on that end um we can create an outlet and marketing and drive sales but you know, like it, it, there has to be something that they're buying. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you know, like getting the products that people want is a whole other side of the business, which Emporium supplies. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, like in this collaboration, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You have um, the data for the sales that drive the sales of this and the marketing for that um, and the products that people want. Yeah. Um, to, to me, my biggest challenge so far, my journey with Emporium is that always having certain events, right? That's how I promote the products and it's t- calling on food brokers and distributors to try the product. At the end of the day, 
when you, I, again, reiterating why I'm excited is because it's one of those platforms that one, the Philippine manufacturers doesn't have to send a bunch of products. It's just a matter of, okay, sending X amount of dollars, but it's all about also how practical really is that to a certain degree, right? Yeah. But to me, it's like creating a different mindset for them, which I'm hoping that they all buy into when I talk to them and wanting to become a part of this vending machine because of the easy access into, you know, shipping it and then storing it and putting it on there. That's probably one of the things that I want to reemphasize over and over that you could literally do all that and then race in, uh, again with this idea and all, because that's, that's a big component. It's one thing to source and ship products into the U.S., but that's another component uh, that that's just needs to have more uh, attention being given to it, just like what Rayson has done for this 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 vending machine project. Right, and it's 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 uh, from a product uh, standpoint. So, like trying to market one product is 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 hard because you have to, you know like you can't diversify if you have one product you can't diversify it as much. The, doing something like this adds diversity. Of a market to ex to the exposure of whatever the product is, because you're kind of like in a thematic zone. So people are are visiting these things because they want a certain flavor, but you're you're alongside other brands that that kind of um, cohabitate with your brand. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the exposure. Like so, like I wanted to go and grab some boy balong, but oh, I didn't know this is that i want to try that too so it's kind of like you have the the ability to to utilize other people's brand names in one sense as well as the brand of the vending machines themselves correct i think overall uh reason is that if or when all of these vending machines are in play i sort of joked around with you a little bit but i'm i'm, I'm partly serious that I think this could be the disconnect um, of introducing Philippine-made products, uh, and, and I was thinking of it like a pasalubong center, because what what I, what I mean by <laughs> that is that there's there's a lot of people who are what's up? What exciting when you go to social media? A lot of people go into Philippines. They come back. They're all excited. They go, I want to go back. I want to do this. So when I hear that, I always keep, they also mention, well, I can't find this particular product in, in the U.S. You know, and and I know it's big there, but it's not here. So technically now you have Philippine manufacturers who may want to consider this is a this is a play for Philippine manufacturers. There's a play for you to want to bring those products here because sometimes some of these major retailers may not dig it yet or they don't see the potential yet. And but they, right. they would love this product that they discovered in the Philippines, but they can't find it here. And now they can have it here. So all of these other products, you know, in, in certain areas, of course, but obviously as it grows, you're going to have more access to where they can put these products and have easy access to it. And that's what excites me in terms of the availability. Just like you said, don't let's not make people work too hard to find a product. You got social media, you got e-commerce. Now you got physically something like a vending machine that could be a, a good percentage of your marketing campaign or your distribution channel. I, I how much I don't know yet. I'm not going to prognosticate on how much you're going to be able to sell through the machine because in, in the end, that's another data that we were probably going to go after and trying to figure out what is that if if you know, especially for an exported product or an imported product. Right. So, so, so to me, uh, if you're still watching out there and you want to understand more about about uh, about what we're trying to do with the vending machine, uh, please uh, reach out to Rayson. He's on LinkedIn, social media, or me, because at the end of the day, we're the one who's constantly promoting it. Uh, Rayson has agreed that he's going to be the one who's sort of like uh, you know making sure that we have all the numbers and uh, have all the different ways that we can market the product. Again. Uh, you've just been listening to Race and Esquejo of, of Race and Media and us here at the Emporium Masterclass. We're almost at the end of the hour here. And again, we've been talking about a business opportunity, uh, maybe just joining a community and trying to promote Philippine made products uh, in the U.S. market. Because um, as Emporium, 
uh, Grayson will reiterate again why he's why he's doing what he's doing with us. We're always trying to figure out how do you cost efficiently, uh, sustainably bring and create awareness and sell and sales opportunities for Philippine made products here. And I think this could be the winner uh, from the perspective of the ease of doing it. Maybe in small steps, baby steps, but I think. Overall, if a Philippine manufacturer is watching it, unless you've got major, you got Buku, you've got a, a like, you know, coming out of your ear in marketing funds, this is probably the best, best, best way right now to test the waters and see what your product will be like. Uh, obviously, with the help of uh, of Race and Media to market the machines that your products are in there. So those are the things that we you've been listening to, what we've been trying to put together. And again, we, we welcome any sort of questions or inquiries about the Philippine, uh, the vending machine. But please also stay tuned to to future master classes of Vaporium that just delves into this. Because I know I try not to do it every week or even other two weeks because I know Rayson's busy, busy. But I will continue to market the product. We'll, we'll have him on again, but maybe we'll get more into details. Uh, maybe the next one will be about where the actual machines are now and how they're doing kind of thing. But uh, maybe we'll talk about the, the the money aspect of it and all the numbers that he's accumulated. So, Rayson, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? No, I, I'm I'm just really excited like that we we're documenting the 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 initial kind of like onset of this project um, and and to see where it goes from here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's why I told you earlier. I think the reason why we're doing it is just to make sure that we have it. But people who are listening to it, we want to collaborate with other people. We definitely do because this is a big task. Uh, not only if you join the community and trying to get the word out, if you have any referrals to where maybe the, the, the machine could be at, uh, or you're still curious about really the numbers associated with what potentially you could make, and what can you put in the products, all, all that stuff. We definitely are here for you. So if there's a plug or maybe there's something that Rayson wants to say, hey, Rayson, I know that you, uh, we're going to go ahead and take in a couple more minutes, but let's talk about really quick about some of your projects that are coming up. I know you're doing something potentially with the Consul General. No, yes. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're collaborating with uh, the Philippine Consul to throw a uh, field market out in historic Filipino town in uh, June. Uh, we have a AAPI month, Filipino um, food month um, event in our our area of downtown LA. We we deemed as the Manila district uh, coming up in uh, the end of April. So uh, definitely stay tuned. There's lots of lots of um, Filipino ness going on. Oh yeah. Right, definitely a lot of Filipinos, my friend, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to continuously promoting the vending machine project with you and possibly even more stuff because, again, you, you just have to uh, Google Racing uh, Manila District. You'll see exactly the style in which how he does it along with other, his other associates and um, pretty much it. So with that being said, I'm probably going to say – Goodbye here. Uh, again, thank you for being on the Emporium Masterclass, Rayson. Uh, you I appreciate you inviting me on here. Oh, no, man. Uh, again, thank you for being cool with the misunderstandings. <laughs> but at least you got to go to downtown LA, bro. Maybe you can, can pick up something for home. I love traffic. Back. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's no traffic yet if you go out right now. But with that being said, Thank you, everyone, for being a part of the Emporium Masterclass. Please make sure to watch tomorrow because we're having uh, SP Retiring Style. She's going to be talking about Philippine real estate and as well as U.S. real estate, how to buy both, not necessarily at the same time, but how to do that. So, again, as part of our special edition of Live at the Emporium, we're going to have that tomorrow. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. You guys take care. Thank you.